Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, coming at such numbers and attempting to join today on a, on a holiday. We're attempting to create an awareness again in the new year, 2022, on safeguarding prostate health. Prostate health is an enigma to many uh, colleagues in the society for the reason it's a very gradual change which happens in men deep inside the body. Changes which happen very gradually and peacefully and which don't make those marks as a sudden onset change or what is not visible outside could actually sometimes become a difficult scenario on an emergency. Safeguarding prostate health happens therefore a very important aspect today in 2022 for all men who watch this and all men who have got relatives who are being treated for prostate issues, all who have got treated in the past also need to be knowing this because there's the entire list of connotations we want to add today. So in a very crisp presentation today from Kokila Bendirubai Ambani Hospital, where we follow every life matters as the motto, improving, attempting to improve quality of life of all individuals who are watching this today and all who are between 40s to 80s in our country, who deserve to be knowing everything about prostates. Kokila Bendirubai Ambani Hospital and Dr. Reddy's lab today tie up to an important platform which is uh, brought to you to bring about this important change. Friends, it's a historic day for umpteen reasons. Historic day because at Coquilab and Hospital, we completed 13 years of transformative healthcare as a quaternary care hospital in this part of the world. And we're stepping today into the 14th year with a promise of miles to go. During this attempt at transformation, we also had a historic day today when India is shining. We had momentous occasion of Ashok Chakra where we moisten our eyes to the sacrifice of individuals. We also have this important day where we all relax and sit back in our comfort zones and look into how we would shape up the next few years and of our life in terms of improving our healthcare. So while we're bringing health to the front row seat in 2022, it's important for us to wake up to that phenomenon. The enigma which always stays is prostate and prostate health awareness is so much missing in society. Making an attempt today on a Republic Day about what, which, how, when, where, and whom to reach on a prostate health, let's, let's spend the next few minutes about this important aspect. So while attempts has always been made towards promoting positive awareness in society about various aspects on health, prostate health takes that very important awareness as issue. The reason is a whole month of September is actually dedicated towards prostate positive awareness on health and prostate cancer issues. The reason for all this is giving so much space to prostate is because as people adjust to various changes in life, progressive urinary health issues also happen very slowly. And people continue to live with the same. They may either be adjusting to it every day, like our black hairs gradually turn gray, like year after year changes do happen in our lives and around. But they are so progressive, they are so silent, and they are so slow that we may not be able to either capably find it abnormal or we possibly postpone or ignore because it's not so much of a hazard till one fine day an accident may happen, which could be health hazard or a prostate issue. So you must see your doctor when you have a urinary health and more important, you must dial you for urology. That's where we all are as urologists in the country. We look forward to making, empowering our colleagues who in the society could take it forward. Today, my salute and ode to all my uh, doctor colleagues who actually follow this Hippocratic Oath as a part of the oath that we take that we Look forward to first do no harm and do no harm. In difficulties, in difficult times like these, and in kind of emergencies, we take those important steps with consent, with understanding. And that's how we are bound together by, as doctors, helping out individuals to understand the disease and to look at their therapy treatment to finally cure. We're attempting today to look at an aspect before all this, which is awareness. That means I, in the audience, don't have a trouble. Dr. Pandey, I am not a patient with prostate issues. I'm still immersing myself today because I'm of the age group 40s to 80s. Either my father or my elder brother or my colleague or my neighbor has undergone a treatment or I come from a place, city, town where there has been no treatment on this. So I need to know more about this. And that's where we are moving and diving deep into the aspect about what motivates us. What motivates you in the audience? Is it success of the past? Is it failures of the past? Is it a scare of a disease which you have seen? Somebody getting catheterized or having a urinary pipe because his urine got blocked. Or is there a need to improve because I'm motivated as a result of the changes happening? I need to see a urologist. Or is it the passion like today, you being on the other side of the table, listening to what we're attempting to put forward? Or is it all about our today's for better tomorrows like the important day today? All this could apply to even prostates. In other words, a success of one surgery or one treatment would motivate many individuals 
to come in. Similarly, failure of somebody's treatment should not demotivate somebody else because not everybody would get the same result. And that's why the awareness is important that if you pick up things in time, things do work in your favor. Therefore, there should not be a scare about this because this is completely treatable. We are looking at that organ as you move forward in the urinary system because colleagues have just joined in completely. So friends, a urologist is one who would look at your entire system of the kidney, the ureters, the urinary bladder, the urethra, the genital organs, and obviously the prostate. It's this entire aspect of upset of issues that we think of. Prostate is that male organ which occupies that part, which is the bladder neck. The area where many a times you cannot reach, it's not visible to you, it's deep in the perineum, between the thighs, deep inside, and there are changes going to happen. Why? Because this is an organ which undergoes a change in lifetime. From the mature years of 30s and 40s and beyond, the hormones undergo a change both in men and women. Women attain menopause in the late 40s and 50s. Men do undergo a hormone change of testosterone. A subset of that testosterone which stimulates prostatic change, which all of us understand in layman's language called prostatic enlargement or prostatic growth, is a change that prostate brings about to itself and to all men very silent. None of us in the audience can escape it. In other words, prostate change will happen in our lifetime. It's all up upon us to pick up this in time. And that's why the awareness today. So on a very relaxed afternoon before your cup of tea arrives in front of you is the prostate in front, which I have highlighted, which is just below the level of the bladder neck. The prostate there, just below the level of the bladder neck is that walnut shape, 15 to 20 grams of gland, which would undergo a change in its lifetime. It's a hormone related gland. Have a look at that path or the passage which urine comes out the path which I just delineated. That's the urinary passage called the urethra, and that is the prostatic urethra. The passage which is looking like a hose pipe in the early years of our life. Remember when we were younger, we could pass urine and could paint on the wall with the stream, which was a forceful stream. This stream does change from 40s, 50s onwards in our fathers and grandfathers because the prostate undergoes multiple changes. Of all the changes that we'll discuss in the prostate, shatter myths and answer your questions in the end, this is an interactive show. In other words, I would expect everybody who has a doubt, has a question or a compliment or any kind of a doubt could probably put it on the chat box. The team out here at Dr. Reddy's and Dr. and the Coquille Lab Hospital is engaging enough to probably put all your comments and questions here, which I would answer in the end. So the urinary passage is an open passage. The tip of the urinary passage is visible to you. God made a very narrow passage which passes through the male organ and it starts at the level of the prostate. So prostate, any change which it under goes or it governs the urinary passage, it could actually tighten up. Let's move into that subject and see what happens around. So the prostate, I did talk about the prostate being out there. Many of us may not be aware of that, but the prostate is at the level of the bladder neck. That means it controls the exit. In other words, there is a great denomination understanding between the bladder and the prostate. Like there's a great understanding between me and the door. When I'm done here, I would walk and the door would open and I would reach outside. It is so smooth that sometimes I don't pay that kind of an understanding or respect to it. Similarly, the bladder is gradually filling up as you and I are seated around. While we are seated and we are watching this, the bladder is gradually filling up with both the kidneys pouring urine slowly as a waste product into the receptacle called the bladder. The bladder fills up to a level and then you want to pass urine. When you go to pass urine and unzip yourself, the bladder then is no, not filling anymore. It changes its entire architecture, its entire activity and now changes the role. Instead of being a passive organ which was receiving urine from the bladder, it starts contracting and compresses urine and pushes it out. So like I walk out and the door opens, the bladder contracts and the passage opens. And the passage is governed by prostate. So imagine the government actually is a prostate which is taking care of that narrow pipe, urethra, which God decided to make it as narrow as it is. It can turn narrower with passing time. And that's where the entire change happens gracefully and gradually. Let's move into that. So knowing your prostate is important and that you know your prostate already to wonderful levels. Some important aspects which would help you to probably, you know, tie the bridge earlier than normal is presentations of prostate for men, for all urologists in the country. I bring this presentation on behalf of Team Urology at the Coquilabian Hospital and also on behalf of all urologists who do the same job every day, morning till evening, Saturday, Monday to Saturday and look at you presenting to them in time. But what actually happens is this, in the in the years of our life, progressive changes happen. And one change could be prostate, which could be ignored. It could be ignored because we don't know about prostate and its activity. So the prostatic changes are changes which gradually would increase the prostatic size internally or externally. Externally can be measured by a sonography, which a sonologist measures and you have a prostate health checkup 
where you see a prostate size 35, 45, 85 grams. But you may not be able to see what the prostate is doing internally to the urinary passage or the door is gradually closing down over decades. And therefore, because the change is very gradual, people may either ignore it or postpone it because it's not troubling them. They do more important things in life and health sometimes go to the back row seat. Unfortunately, for those individuals who know that their urinary flow is not good and are aware of that, possibly could miss it out till one fine Saturday evening or one fine day in a resort or a holiday in a different location, you could land up with an emergency. So that could be another presentation of a prostatism where a urine gets blocked is a very common knowledge to everybody. Presentation of prostate also happens in health checkup at the Coquilabin Hospital on the first floor. Individuals undergo health checkup in late 40s, 50s and beyond year after year. And they come and see us up here on the second floor in urology department saying that my prostate is enlarged. And then the question is, does your prostate trouble you? And they don't understand it. Obviously, because the prostate troubles them is not known to them, or it's a very gradual change, like the days of the calendar gradually rotating till one fine new year. So the prostate health checkups do pick up the ultrasound size. They pick up the residual urine left over in the bladder. They pick up some progressive change where the bladder was a gall thickened, or there is an effect to the kidneys in terms of hydrourotenephrosis or the back pressure. So those are things which are picked up in the health checkup, which is possibly an incidental presentation or a delayed presentation because somebody adjusted. And on interrogation or interview across the table, when a urologist talks to you, you pick up all those and understand that we were gradually postponing. Then there is the presentation of the prostate, which is quite common, failing therapy. That means our colleagues in the society who are between 50s to 80s undergoing therapy already for prostatism. They've got issues in urine for which they're seeing their physicians, the general practitioner, the family physicians, the surgeons, the urologists, their doctors, and sometimes sadly also across the counter. In doing so, the medicines may sometimes not work. The occlusion or the obstruction happening, giving changes which I would talk about, may perhaps not work in their favor and they are failing therapy. So that could be presentation of men who want to get better, are motivated from the failure of the therapy and want to taste success because of the need that they have. And therefore they want their tomorrows to be better than today's and that applies to prostate as I said in the beginning. So one important presentation today on the 26th January 2022 is an awareness drive of the drives that we at Coquilab and Hospital on various subjects do take forward and across the globe my colleagues do it. So the presentations of prostate in men can be many and we each of us in this audience could be fitting in somewhere. Either we don't know about it or there's a progression which we would close our eyes and watch and completely compare ourselves from our younger age then we know we are changing. Or there could be an emergency to somebody who must have happened around and we will be very, very carefully aware I would not let that happen. That commonly is seen, you know, when uh, people walk out with a urinary catheter outside my room and prepare themselves for a treatment, their sons and their, their colleagues actually say, I need to prevent that happening. I don't want to land up in an emergency where my flow is poor. I have a catheter. So there's a worry about it and a scare about it. So many a times that emergency should not happen. So friends, these are the presentations which could happen for prostates in men. And that is my first awareness drive. It's important for us to be awake that somebody is undergoing this all the time. In fact, everybody is undergoing this all the time. It's so gradual and, and so gradual that we haven't measured it. So unless we measure it, how do we know it? So let's understand the measurement of our prostate change, which as an individual in the society, you could take it up. I'll come to that. So what do people complain of? If there are people progressive and uh, getting into symptoms have got trouble, and these are men between 50s to 80s, who are our fathers and our grandfathers and our senior colleagues. Let's look at what they complain. They complain of, I'm passing urine whole night. That is, I'm, I'm awake. I get up multiple times. I need to pass urine again and again, Dr. Pandey. I have to search toilets in the daytime. I need to rush and look at where is my toilet close to my place. Otherwise, I would leak urine. I cannot control urine before I reach the toilet because there's an urgency frequency and I would just leak out. I pass blood in urine and that's never normal, please. I am taking a long time to empty my bladder, Dr. Pandey, and how do we take it forward? And this is not from last day, last week, last month. It's been for some time. I woke up or I did a health checkup or somebody sent me. I always feel that I've got incomplete emptying. And all these are matters about prostate undergoing a change where an internal change is happening slowly. I pass urine in bed. That's a sad accident which could happen to people at any age group. Though I see kids in the 6 to 15 year age group where they're postponed their therapy by their parents and come with enuresis or bedwetting. But it can happen even to elderly and geriatric age group. I pass urine in drops and that's something sad because the occlusion or obstruction has become quite significant. I pass urine 20 times a day. That means the bladder has now become overactive. I'm not able to hold urine. And if I'm holding urine in a subset of individuals, we could have pain in the bladder, interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome. So this is a broad subset of presentation of prostate issues, which men present to urologists across the world. They present to the outpatient department, they present in emergency, 
It just depends on whom they have talked to. Have they talked to a family physician and general practitioner who obviously takes charge immediately? And many colleagues, family physicians and general practitioners are in so much close touch. They help us out by picking up these patients elderly in the society, number one. Number two, patients do complain sometimes that in emergency and they would probably reach out the urologist earlier than later. And therefore, it's important for dial you for urology when you have urinary complaints because you are progressing on a cascade and that probably needs to be halted. Let's look at a few complaints and let's look at little examples of it. For example, I'm taking a long time to start urine. I mean, normally what happened? You used to reach the washroom, unzip parcels because our bladder is full and it's making that knock, knock, knock. And the bladder should empty because I said bladder contracts and the passage opens. It does not happen sometimes in men who complain. I take a long time to start urination. That means if it's a young man in his 20s, 30s and early 40s, it may not necessarily be the prostate. Prostate is still on the very younger side. Hormones have not taken up that change yet. In other words, they could be blocked in the male organ or the urethra, which is a 15 to 20 centimeter organ, maybe from a previous childhood trauma, bicycle injury, a surgery, a high risk exposure and urethritis or infections in the urethra. Anything which a young men have in terms of not able to empty their bladder could actually be a urethritis, a urethral stricture, something where the urinary passage does not let them empty complete. So they could all have complaints of prostatism sans prostate. There's no prostatic enlargement occlusion, but the urethra is probably tightening up and that's giving symptoms too. Elderly men complain because they have got a prostatic enlargement as a word enlargement, but the enlargement internally causing a resultant obstruction to the urinary passage and your bladder needs to generate enough pressure to overcome the resistance that is happening around because of the enlarged prostate, occluding it. So very important. Elderly could be even 50s and could even be 80s. In other words, elderly is not the connotation of chronological age, but the change is happening as a result of the hormones bringing about a change in the prostate, causing an occlusion to the urinary passage, which is governed by the prostate internally. Because prostate under se enlarge hokar ke block karne ki koshish kar rahi hai. To ye rasta dheere dheere shanay shanay, dashak dashak apne aap ko block hota ja raha hai. Dousra, my experience bleeding in my urination. And bleeding in urination is never normal. Nobody ever bled in urine. If you bled in urine, there could be reasons. Unfortunately, because it clears up after a few hours, a few days, it sometimes also gets ignored because we are busy in our lives and health state has not come to the front row seat. We sometimes get partly investigated by our colleagues in general practice and physicians because you reach out to them. But then because the bleeding stopped and there was some microscopic bleeding, you may miss it out. And that's where you need to go to a logical conclusion. Finally, when it would present an emergency with a massive bleeding, it could be one dark wintry night on a wrong day, on a holiday like this. It could be troublesome. So any bleeding in urine is not normal. The fall bleeding in urine, which could even be staining undergarments when you get up at night, which is called as urethroragia, or we call it as hematospermia, which is bleeding in the semen, or bleeding in urine, which is a frank bleeding in the beginning or the end, or complete or with clots, cannot be taken lightly. All episodes of bleeding should be taken to logical conclusion by a urologist. That's the most important crux of the matter. It never is, it's never because of summer season, like you are bleeding from the nose as epistaxis, or never because you drank less water, you are bleeding in urine. Please understand, bleeding in urine can be because only there's a cause. And what could be the common causes that a man needs to know, like I and you need to know is stones in the kidneys, in the ureter, in the urinary bladder, severe infections which can cause bleeding, prostate changes, prostate as it enlarges, increases the blood supply. And the blood supply sometimes can overwhelm the whole situation. And patients can bleed very spontaneously from the prostate. In other words, majority of India with cardiac issues at this point in time in the same age group I'm talking about, Either a bunch of angioplasty or had a transient ischemic attack or probably had a stroke or may possibly have a cardiac bypass would be on blood thinners. And blood thinners in a right individual can even cause bleeding in urine, which could be a forerunner of something early or something late, which could bleed. And finally, cancers. I deal with cancers of the kidney, cancers of the ureter, cancers of the urinary bladder, cancers of the prostate, of the urethra, of the testis, external genitalia. So I deal with all these regularly as a urologist, like my urology colleagues and me. Look into that, that people probably had something and postponed. They had a pain or they had a swelling, they had a lump or they bled in the past and they possibly did not take a logical conclusion of all the investigation that a urologist would have taken it forward and concluded the causes of bleeding if there is anything significant. That means there's something called a microscopic hematuria in a midstream specimen which we work up all the way up to the CT scan and find may not sometimes pick up. There could be nephrological causes of that. So let's get into the important issue which our fathers and grandfathers may be going through is passing urine four to seven times at night. Remember, in the geriatric age group of our, of our parents and grandparents, 60s to 80s and beyond, elderly people have got a milder and a lesser sleep and they have got more urine production at night. 
both happen to be silent soft enemies because you are almost awake at night in your geriatric age group you don't deep asleep with the rem sleeps which somebody else has or snores so a light sleep at that age group in the elderly, elderly population on the other side urine production more at night because of the hormone changes which we call as nocturia producing more urine at night and who produces more urine at night people who are into too much of tea coffee alcohol water and all indian men who desire to be having too much of milk at night would produce more urine at night number one number two elderly people produce more urine at night because of changes happening in the hormone the arginine vasopressin mechanism all diabetics produce more urine at night so diabetics is all about polyuria polyphagia polydipsia and therefore you produce more you produce more the kidney has to produce more it all comes to a receptacle called the bladder which is sensate organ and it makes you go to the washroom again and again so elderly people produce more urine at night these are important aspects we need to know first so i see a lot of people who come in in the outpatient department from monday to saturday saying i'm getting a four to seven times at night my sleep is hugely disturbed if it is somebody in 40s 50s he is absolutely into an accident kind of situation he wants a relief on that in other words getting up so many times at night you're not concentrating the next day morning you're sleepy and somnolent the next day morning and not able to handle yourself so that's called nocturia getting up multiple times at night this affects children this affects adults this can affect any age group is attached to a social stigma if you are bedwetting or it's probably your performance status the next day morning across the computer or in the bank or probably across the table like a doctor or a patient so improper sleep at night doesn't rejuvenate you into the revolution that you want the next day morning to be happening from your table and you could sometimes leak urine in the bed which is called enuresis or bedwetting and the social stigma and the problem and these are all treatable these are all treatable so i think we need to look at 6 to 15 year children who are bedwetting at night their parents need to take them to a urologist and to a pediatrician on the other side all elderly people who are bedwetting or are passing urine multiple times at night could be either having nocturia or could be having one of the first symptoms of prostatitism so both of the issues actually bring about changes and look at somebody 55 55 years young not old straining to pass urine since last 20 years so 20 years he has got urinary complaints he had a whole road traffic accident then obviously road traffic accident fracture of pelvis perineal injuries etc could also bring about a change or an injury in the urinary passage so that history is classical many a times if you lay all your cards on table and tell your doctors everything i think we pick up from them very quickly and understand what so imagine somebody has got a stricture urethra or a blockage in the urinary passage in last 20 years he is also gracefully aging his prostate is undergoing a hormone change he may have a prostatic enlargement but if i go deep into the history i understand the culprit has already been there for last 20 years in 20 years i have had obstructive warding to strain to push to pass urine how do i measure that and that measurement comes by many ways one of them is ascending urethrogram take a road map of the geography of the urethra and identify that the urethra has got a narrowing or the tightness or ask them to perform and they are good students they when you go to the exam and they perform we get to know how good a student they are because a report card called uroflowmetry comes over let's talk about these two things to our colleagues in society because these two are important aspects we need to know that is an x ray test you know about the chest x ray you know other x rays this x ray is called ascending urethrogram if i have somebody young in 20s 30s 40s even 60s and 80s if somebody has a difficulty in passing urine somebody says i have got an injury to the urinary passage in the past a road traffic accident instrumentation a surgery done in the past the urinary passage may narrow up this entire aspect of the urinary passage in the male organ which i said is a long organ till you reach the prostate here that's where the prostate is this is the urethra which i just showed you this is the organ where the urethra is internal and a urethrogram is an x ray study which gives us an idea that the blockage could also be in a urinary passage it could be because of urethritis urethral stricture etc so it's important for us to measure and identify and understand a lot by the history and the clinical examination a lot by the records that you continue to store about your past diseases and to pick it up friends we are sitting on prostate gland on 26 january 2022 on the platform created by dr reddy's labs and kokila bendru bay ambani hospital where i speak on behalf of team urology about this important gland which is changing every day every month every year and every decade for all of us let's talk about prostate so there are people who could have issues where the urinary passage could be blocked that's a small prostate of 22 grams and he's an elderly gentleman his urine does not come out and what he gets is a recurrent urinary infection so that is the kind of situation which is happening in him we need to look into what does the prostate mean i've been talking about this for last 15 minutes but prostate is a walnut sized gland it's located just below the bladder and the beginning of the urethra it's just in front of the motion passage called the rectum the urethra runs through the center of the prostate and then through the male organ called the penis the urine flows to that 20 cm passage 
prostate secretes some fluid that nourishes in the early years of sexual life, but more so in elderly people, it has not got much job. So why does prostate made by God is a million dollar question. The prostate does something in the early aspect because it's a fibromuscular glandular organ and it is at a very important trijunction of the urinary passage on one side. Other side is the sexual passage, the passage of the, the secretions, which are the spermatozoa, which actually are secreted and are brought out and stored in seminal vesicles and come via the prostate into the urinary passage of urethra that somebody ejaculates. So the prostate happens to be at that very important junction. Therefore, an important organ without doing much in that elderly age group where it becomes at fault. So what are, the, what are the things which can happen to prostate? Just three things which can happen to a prostate is what we need to know. It could be happening to anybody. It could be either an acute change or a gradual change or a sad change. Let's look at the acute change or a sudden onset change. It's called prostatitis. Like you know, appendicitis. Uh, you also know itis stands for inflammation. Inflammation of the prostate where an organ can get inflamed. It's a small organ which is undergoing a gradual hormone change in 40s and 50s uh, because of the testosterone converting to dihydrotestosterone, stimulating the gland. And the gland therefore could undergo a change into one of the two directions. Now, while that could, could be happening, it could be occluding the urinary passage. This could happen in very young men in their 20s, 30s, 40s also, more so in diabetic people too, where an infection in the prostate could happen directly because it's looking like a honeycomb where one infection spreads like a wildfire or because of an obstruction and an infection related to an obstruction, urine doesn't empty and the prostate gland gets infected. This infection could be an acute change. Sudden onset infection in the prostate could bring about burning sensation while passing urine, not able to pass urine, passing in drops, having a pain and discomfort in the lower passage of the perineum deep inside in front of the rectum or the anus, and sometimes having a lot of discomfort which actually could put you into even retention. This could even lead to fever and could lead into retention of urine where urine is blocked. So why is all this happening? This is happening because the prostate has undergone a change called inflammation or an action where we need to have a sudden onset massage, which is all about symptomatic therapy, about antibiotics, about drainage of urine as required. So prostatitis is all about managing an acute change, which if not done can go to a chronicity or called a chronic prostatitis. Prostatic inflammation, sometimes go long term. And therefore, when we look at prostatitis in a young man, sexually active, young elderly gentlemen, our parents and grandparents who get infected because of the obstruction for long time, diabetes, immunocompromised, hygiene issues, etc. These infections can be terrible. Let's look at a common problem that you and I could go through is called prostatic enlargement in a layman's term, which in a medical term could be a BPH. In other words, benign prostatic hypertrophy, hypoplasia. Now, what does it mean? It means that the prostate is undergoing a virtual change in everybody up to the age of 69, 79, 89. And it all starts late 40s, 50s. The symptoms which result as a result of an occlusion or obstruction to the flow of urine could be all about symptoms of difficult urination. That is a very gradual, slow process that people are going through. And that's what you and I need to be aware of. If you are in a public toilet after you alighted from a flight and you go to a washroom where the bladder is full and you start passing urine, some of them are still passing urine for a long time. Others are actually quickly completed and left. In other words, when you compare it with yourself of your past or you compare yourself in a public washroom, you know that you're taking a longer time to empty. You sometimes leave the washroom because the bladder doesn't empty completely. So these are symptoms of changes happening in the prostate that men ignore or it just gets ignored. Let's look at that. That's the prostate. Let's look into what does prostate look like. Urinary passage out here is quite broad. You can look at that. Broad passage at the level of the bladder neck. But as the passage gets tightened up, as a result of the prostate enlarging, the urinary passage is getting tightened up. Imagine the bladder is a large receptacle with 500 ml of urine waiting. And as the bladder contracts and pushes urine out, the urine cannot come out for narrow squeezed urethra as a result of prostate adenoma enlarging. The urethra thereafter, you can see, is a broad passage. I mean, there's no urethral stick. This prostate occluding the urinary passage is a crux of the matter. That means I need to measure that and understand and probably wake everybody up in terms of what is your flow. In other words, if you all look at your scorecards, it could, there could be a scorecard that would help us to identify how good or bad is my flow. That's something I've adjusted to. Sometimes people wake up with an ultrasound image showing 100 grams prostate or 80 grams prostate and the bladder does not empty completely after the sonography. But that's just a change. That is something which has been picked up of the progressive change that you and I did not know about. So let's get into that understanding and look at what. And finally, prostate cancer, a change because it's a hormone-related gland, a change could just take offshoot into other direction 
where a hormone related cancer as a result of being having testosterone can happen and this can happen completely independent or it could be happening in an enlarged gland a gland is enlarged and we could pick up a prostate cancer by either a clinical examination which i do or by a psa a blood test which in a subset of patients with high range could actually be a marker towards though it's a surrogate marker and finally a clinical examination or digital rectal examination are we not talking about all our colleagues in the audience having actually a friend as a urologist in 50s to 80s age group who picks up things early either as prostatitis or as prostatic enlargement or prostate cancer and therefore the awareness drive on changes which are gradual and which are not known to us so i was talking about bph the common lineage that we all go through most of us actually would go through a change of bph or obstruction to the flow of urine It means a flow which was so wonderful and coming in a rush gradually slows down and you start train to pass urine the urinary passage which was very broad at a point in time gradually narrowing up this broad passage gradually getting compromised because the prostate is undergoing a change and that is all which brings about various kinds of symptoms the symptoms matter does the size of the prostate matter or the occlusion of the prostate matter occlusive prostate as the one which i did talk about in the photograph is all about obstruction to the flow adjusted over not days months or years over decades the progression is happening gradually over decades around which leads to what a poorer flow than what you had in the past and the flow only gets worse there could be a secondary bladder over activity or the bladder adjusting or supporting you by contracting more and trying to push your urine out so a small prostate also could be occlusive or maybe a very large prostate could be only enlarged in size but may not be occlusive so there are people who come with 100 grams prostate and say i need a surgery but i would say do you have any complaints they say no we don't have any complaints but i was told i have a large prostate i need a surgery and i would say just show me a result which i want to see in terms of the flow and i'll know whether you require something or not in other words surgery is not the only answer to prostate changes around what are we looking at we're looking at size of prostate does not always confer the clinical state a very small prostate can occlude and completely block a very large prostate may still not block your urinary passage but just be enlarging but sparing the urethra in the center it could just be enlarging so large prostates if picked up incidentally on uh, the health checkup if picked up by clinical examination can be attempted to shrink in the health checkup scenario or incidental scenario if it is not causing a bladder outflow obstruction that means today we are spoiled for choice in an era 24 25 years ago when i was a student at cmc velour and jepmo pondicherry i remember most of the patients who undergo a surgery there were not many medicines available in that era approximately 3 decades or earlier our teachers would always operate everybody or people would live on a catheter because the treatment was a cure a cure was a surgery there was nothing which could bring about an improvement or halt the progression of the change which is happening now nobody can actually halt you from going into 2023 your age will become one year less younger or older in other words the age will change there's no way you can stop it but today a urologist is empowered by the wonderful research of various pharmaceutical companies around where the prostate can be brought to shrink so while your age changes gracefully and becomes black hairs to gray hairs your prostate can be made younger and younger what does it mean the prostate has a propensity to enlarge the enlargement is a gradual process a gradual i said over decades not over days months so the, this gradual process of enlargement can be halted can even be reversed by 5 ara inhibitors which i'll talk in short is all about a medicine which can be taken for longer period of time which shrinks about the prostate by bringing about those involution changes naturally uh, if there's a bladder outflow obstruction and medicine could be added to it so imagine while age is changing if you are aware about yourself today and thereafter you would possibly see your urologist friend in your cities around pick up this important aspect of occlusion or obstruction to the flow of prostate or the changes that you have complained will be actually taken up by your urologist and would he would identify the reason and would put you to the right therapy both to improve your flow which is your your complaint and also to look at the prostatic size which can attempt to be shrunken is an attempt made to be shrinking it around so look into that look at the prostate which i have talked for so long this prostate has got a tail over enlargement you can see that the enlargement of the prostate is inside the bladder the prostate is actually here down there on the left side but the prostate is actually enlarged and grown and grown all the way into the bladder it's a medial lobe enlargement it's gone into the bladder the other one is a lateral lobe enlargement but both the lobes are occlusing and kissing each other and keeping it very safe and simple just blocking the urinary passage and the third one is a trilobe enlargement where the prostate is enlarged in all direction wherever it knows as it grows around it only troubles so these are all gradual changes it did not take your knowledge to know that and neither it took your permission to grow it's all happening gradually inside your and my body only those evaluations which will help us out to move further to prevent it so the obstructive symptoms that you and i could complain as prostate undergoes enlargement or the bph changes are 
hesitancy, taking a long time to start urination. When you talk about that in a clinical scenario, decreased force and caliber of the stream. My stream has become weak. बहुत पतली धार से आती धार उतनी स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं है बहुत दूर तक नहीं जाती मैं आप दीवार में पेंट नहीं कर पाता जो मैं बचपन में करता था मेरा ब्लैडर पूरा खाली नहीं होता हमें पेशाब करने में बहुत जोर लगाना पड़ता है और यूरिन करने के बाद भी ड्रिबल होता रहता है जब मैं निकल के आता हूं तो मेरे को लगता है अभी भी बहुत पेशाब बचा हुआ है उसे कैसे खाली करने की जरूरत है सो ऑब्सट्रक्टिव सिम्टम्स इज ऑल अबाउट ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन 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 टू द नारो यूरथ्रा विच गॉड गेव एज अ नारो पैसेज विच इज गवर्न बाई द प्रोस्टेट होते होते ब्लैडर जो अंदर भर के रखी हुई है वो इरिटेट हो रही है ब्लैडर इज गेटिंग इरिटेटेड दीज आर कॉल्ड स्टोरेज सिम्टम्स और इरिटेटिव सिम्टम्स और इरिटेटिव वॉडिंग व्हाट हैपेंस टू द ब्लैडर एज द ब्लैडर गेट्स फिल्ड अप एंड इट नीड्स टू एम्प्टी स्मूथली व्हिच इट हैज डन ओवर डिकेड्स इट्स सडनली गेटिंग इरिटेटेड बिकॉज़ यू आर नॉट कीपिंग द पैसेज ओपन एनीमोर इट हैज टू हैव टू क्रॉस द रेजिस्टेंस टू एम्प्टी सो ब्लैडर इज इरिटेटेड इट हैज अ माइंड ऑफ इट्स ओन इट हैज अ सेंसेशन ऑफ इट्स ओन इट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स एंड ट्राइज टू मेक यूरिनेशन हैपन otherwise it will go into an obstruction now therefore you got increased frequency of urination you are passing urine again and again you going more frequently that possibly could be either an idiopathic or active bladder de novo apne aap hi shuru ho gaya bladder khud ek shaitan bachche ki tarah bar bar contact kar rahi hai or on the other side the bladder starts contracting irrationally and erratically only because there is an obstruction you are busy knocking the door because the door is closed if the door was open you would have just walked out smoothly because the consultation is over so you walk and the door opens If the door does it open you knock 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 till it opens around out here it possibly is late what is late it's late because the bladder is contracting for quite some time against a gradual change in the prostatic occlusion that occlusion is not letting you go any more it's only progressing and you may have not seen your doctor or may not be aware of it now you get more aware because now are those more bothersome symptoms you got an urgency which is difficult to postpone if you postpone you would leak urine at odd times odd locations like standing in a queue or in a bus or outside a consult or probably in office intermittency because bladder contracts erratically cannot empty completely in one contraction while the passage is still blocked many people get up multiple times at night and there's a burning sensation inflammation infection all happening because the bladder is not emptying completely so many people do come late they come late when the irritative symptoms come up which are symptoms of delay that means the bladder was obstructed for quite some time it learned the behavior of adjusting post adjustment it started to adjust on its own and then brings about the change which becomes glorious enough to now wake us up now we go and see a urologist so many people then come and complain i've got frequency urgency urge incontinence leaking urine also wearing diapers sadly but have also got obstruction for many many years so if we had not ignored obstruction at that point in time or not ignored the flow patterns which were changing because of obstruction hesitancy the bladder would not have got so much irritated so it's all it's all a cascade that is going through men also have got overactive bladder like women overactive bladder is just a bladder contracting erratically which can happen de novo but this is a situation where a progression of change is happening decade by decade where the bladder has now got hit so symptoms if you still postpone could be burning sensation in urination and a urinary infection which could be fever which could be burning which could be all those uh, issues which we call as strangury now bleeding in urine is a late complaint but could it even happen early because the prostate is enlarged it has got a great blood supply and the blood supply can just tear off by straining to pass urine number one number two you could be on blood thinners which your cardiologist has given or probably post a stroke and a neurological event and that could lead to a prostate bleed because the prostate is enlarged your straining could lead to prostatic enlargement and bleeding either way there could be stones forming in the urinary bladder as a result of the stasis of the urine in the bladder and they could irritate and cause bleeding and then you wake up to a ultrasound showing multiple stones in the urinary bladder and finally cancer prostate can cause bleeding around so bleeding can happen because of three reasons as a result of prostate the prostate itself a prostate with blood thinners or an infection related bleeding or a stone happened in the bladder causing bleeding or a prostate cancer causing bleeding so bleeding and prostate go hand in glove as progression happens and then painful urination i said strangury difficulty in passing urine straining not able to empty completely uh, going through a trauma and probably just postponing rather than dialing you for urology and seeing your urologist in your city and finally because the bladder is too full like a pregnant bladder in the lower abdomen you could actually have pain in the abdomen something where you're not emptying your bladder completely so these are important aspects we are waking up to as we move forward what does your urologist do he asks you to give a urine sample which is called a urine routine and urine culture a word of caution here all the time a urine sample is what you give it's not collected in the lab by somebody else therefore kindly give a proper sample and what is the proper urine sample it's always a midstream and a clean cat specimen let me dwell on this for a while the urine sample that you give should be a clean cat specimen not contaminated so all men who are being evaluated for urinary tract symptoms or even women too for other symptoms the urine should always be a midstream and a clean cat 
not necessarily always early morning six o'clock. If you see me at ten o'clock or twelve o'clock in the afternoon, you will give a urine sample then and there. The urine sample is given by retracting the prepuce or the skin, which is contaminated all the time with bacteria and fungus. Pull it back completely, wash off the organ well. Your bladder is full. Start passing urine. The first part of urine does not go to the bottle. Only middle part goes to the bottle. In other words. चमड़े को पीछे किया अच्छे से सफाई की पेशाब करना शुरू किया पहला पेशाब छोड़ के सिर्फ बीच का पेशाब ही आप बॉटल में देंगे बिना बॉटल को टच किए मिड स्ट्रीम क्लीन कैच स्पेसिमन बोथ फॉर रूटीन एंड कल्चर नॉट नेसेसरी ऑलवेज अ अर्ली मॉर्निंग सिक्स ओ क्लॉक सैम्पल इट शुड नॉट बी कॉन्टामिनेटेड विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी कॉमन इन्वेस्टिगेशन दैट अ मॉडर्न पेशेंट डज मेनी टाइम्स एंड ब्रिंग्स अ रिपोर्ट फॉर मी टू डिसाइफ द अदर वे राउंड इन अरा वी यूज टू आस फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन रिक्वायर्ड नाउ वी गेट ऑल द इन्वेस्टिगेशन done by a modern patient so ultrasonography tells us about the prostatic size tells us about how much urine left over in the bladder after you pass urine also tells us about the bladder wall thickness or the bladder's excessive contraction required to empty urine through a changing prostate and also sometimes if there is a decompensation the kidneys may be swollen the urine may start getting collected which should not happen which is called as hydrourotronephrosis so all these are progressive changes and very gradual which a doctor colleague of ours called sonologist would pick up examine evaluate take the images and send us as a ultrasonography report what am i interested i am interested in your performance how good is your performance across the prostate is what is a urologist interested in so he asks you questions and you tell him about obstructive voiding and irritative voiding while you tell all that he would like to look at your performance so how good a student you are at your home when you go to the examination hall you perform you get a report card called as euro flow metry metry is measurement flow is speed and euro is urine in other words obstruction to the flow of urine is best measured when you pass urine in full speed whatever your speed is in a computerized toilet in the toilet when you go in full bladder and pass urine whatever flow it is we pick up the issues about how good or how bad it is and how much compromise you are and that's all we need to know serum psa prostate specific antigen stands for psa is a surrogate marker we'll come to that in a, in a while psa is a blood test normally we do it in early morning as fasting state but can be done at odd times PSA can get raised in symptomatic patients even after a severe urinary tract infection, which we call as prostatitis. So prostatitis can shoot the PSA, which normally is between zero and four nanogram per cent. So anything between ten, twenty, fifty, hundred, thousand, it can just suddenly go up very high. The prostate-specific antigen also is raised in cancer prostate. I say also only because I wanted to mellow down the word cancer at this point in time. Prostate cancer can be picked up by a urologist. by looking at the psa values by looking at a clinical examination called digital rectal examination his index finger is supposed to be measuring and quantifying and evaluating a prostate and picks up all that because that's the most important part which actually examines everything and finally the the evaluations by an mri the evaluations by a biopsy as required so your urologist will ask only these investigations he will also ask you if you are a diabetic what kind of hygiene do you maintain around are you circumcised are you constipated with constipation only adds to more urinary issues etc so prostate without your knowledge and without your permission can grow in all directions and can also enlarge inside the bladder i showed you in the picture where there is a median lobe enlargement this enlargement cannot be quantified in digital rectal examination and can something which could be troublesome so it can something which even cannot be shrunken by my medicines even after months years or decades something where sometimes in an occlusive prostate which has a median lobe enlargement patients would land up getting an operation if there is an obstruction to the flow of urine so we are talking about uroflowmetry to me uroflowmetry is a ecg of the bladder what does it mean if i want to know about your heart we want to open up your heart all that we will do is an ecg and we know all about your heart that will help us to pave a direction whether you're going to angiography or you're going to go home and angiography will decide whether you're going to undergo an angioplasty or a bypass or you're going to go home in other words the crux of the matter is an ecg ecg is a performance of the heart and that's measured just from outside without opening your heart similarly if i want to measure your urinary flow aspect or a capability of your flow all i would do is a euro flow metric the flow rate the kind of a bell shaped graph that you see the pattern of flow the flow time that you take longer or shorter time to the maximum flow and not hesitancy and looking at the voiding times and then finally the pvr or the post void residue it all tells me about what are you going through and what you must have gone through let's look at somebody's euro flow metric or in my language ecg of the bladder this is mr pradeep who has got a bell shaped curve he has passed urine at a great speed of 18.5 ml per second he has passed 277 ml and what is left over is only 15 ml not only 0 to 50 0 to 75 ml is acceptable in a background of good flow a poor flow then the the residual volume may not have much meaning because the flow itself is poor so you from a uroflowmetry know about the flow pattern the way he passes 
how much he passes, how much is left over. On a sonography, you may not know all that because it's an observer-oriented study where a sonography can tell you only this much. But remember, as a urologist, we utilize your language, your understanding, your, your difficulty on that by an IPSS symptom scoring. We look at the entire aspect, study it out and take it forward to the next level by identifying and measuring. And that measurement is a uroflometry. Let's look at a graph of somebody who passes 527 ml of urine with a great flow. He is above the pass marks and is passing urine very well. At the end of it, if you look at residual volume, only 10 ml of urine is left out. That means he is good enough. He can probably go. His prostate may be enlarged. I could attempt to shrink his prostate gland by one medicine, but I don't need to improve his flow anymore. His flow is good. He empties his bladder fully. Let's look at somebody who has got a very poor flow. He has got a flow which is baseline. He strains and passes urine, stops and starts, stops and starts like an intermittency. At the end of it, if you look at the right side, his residual volume is 300 ml. So he has a high residual volume left over even after completely passing urine. His flow is poor. This man deserves to be seeing his urologist in his city because on a uroflometry or the examination of his on the uroflometry decides that he is already completely at the corner, would slip down any day. It could land up into an emergency called retention of urine or blockage of urine. So this is what we could adjust to gradually and gracefully as things change from a great uroflometry which you had at some point in time it happens in 40s, 50s, and 60s, could change because of the occlusion of the prostate, causing the urethra to narrow, and therefore straining and passing urine with a drops or with difficulty. That is what I was interested in transmitting today in an awareness drive at the Kokula Ben Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, hosted by Dr. Reddy's labs, where we're attempting to make you aware that changes which are gradually happening, one fine day could be an emergency. If any of us in the audience today has got a friend, a colleague, an elder brother, or probably a society or parents, father, having an obstruction to the flow of urine. Either he could be on medication, which is not effective, or it could be possibly that it is effective only to a level. We need to assess a patient, and that assessment comes by a uroflometry. On individuals who are having a poor flow, we need to know why is the flow poor. If I'm not going to reach outside, then either I'm too weak or the door is closed. Any of these two will not let me reach outside. Either the bladder is weak and is not able to contract, or the passage is choked because the prostate is enlarged. Now, which of these two is the culprit that the urinary passage is not letting the urine come out? So in other words, to identify who is the culprit in this poor flow, either the bladder, which could be weak, or obstruction to the flow of urine, we may have to do the next test called urodynamics. A dynamic change which is studied by a multiple graphs to assess the low urinary tract both while filling and by passing urine is called urodynamics. That's a, that's a test that we do compared to a uroflometry or an examination that you give to give a report card. So urodynamics tells all. It tells whether the bladder is weak or strong. It tells about how much is the obstruction to the flow of urine. Now, when does the bladder turn weak or when does the bladder turn underactive? I said in an irritative bladder and an overactive bladder, the bladder is making urine again and again. It's trying to contract to an obstruction which could gradually get completely obstructed as you saw in an individual who has got a poor flow. But there could be an underactive bladder in the same situation. He may have a prostatic enlargement or no enlargement, but his prostate may, wherever it is, the bladder could be weak. So what are the common reasons of weak bladder? Number one, again, age, elderly people. Number two, long-standing diabetes mellitus. Diabetes brings about changes in the eyes, in the kidneys, in various other end organs, including uh, the organ of the bladder. The bladder sensation goes down. The bladder's contraction and relaxation powers go down. So all people who are more than 10 years of diabetics, all people who are more than long-standing diabetics of 10, 20, 30 years, People who have got uncontrolled diabetes could have excessive amount of sexual problems because the end organ does not give way and the erections become very poor. On the other side, they also have end organ changes in terms of the kidney causing diabetic nephropathy. They have diabetic retinopathy and they land up sadly with the bladder not contracting to push urine out, which is called diabetic cystopathy. So try to understand that diabetes is an amazing killer. India is roaring in to become the diabetic capital of the world. We need to have those lifestyle changes, bringing health road to front row seat in COVID times Exercise, exercise, look at our diet, believe our doctors, see our diabetologists, control our diabetes and not look at the seasons where we could eat mangoes and fruits in abundance. It is important to control diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes, diabetes of long standing could lead to underactive bladder, a bladder which has become very silent. If you don't get up, you will never reach outside. As simple as that. The bladder doesn't contract, urine will never come out. What is the plight of these individuals who have got underactive bladder? They either strain to pass urine, push and strain and pass urine, like as if they are always constipated, though they are constipated too as a result of neurological troubles which happens in diabetes. And the end result is they may land up with urinary catheter in the evening of their life. So all diabetic individuals, all people who have got spinal problem, all people who have got neurological problem may land up with unfortunately an underactive bladder. So when you have a prosthetic enlargement, 
and you have got diabetes of more than 10 years or you have got spinal surgeries done, you've got issues in the spine, your urologist will be keen to know why the uroflometry is so bad. And he would do the urodynamics to prove that the bladder is still has a contraction power. That means when he does a good treatment and a surgery for you, the bladder will contract and empty. So underactive bladder is again a very silent phenomenon of diabetics, which again is never discussed in public awareness drives around. So friends, looking at somebody who actually has got an obstruction to the flow of urine. Have a look at this. He has a small prostate. He has got gross obstructive wording and he was 105 when he was actually presented to us, double the age of, more than double the age of mine and he failed catheterization. Such people getting recurrent urinary infection should not be left alone. So small prostate or large prostate, we don't look at the size of the prostate. We look at what is the prostate doing to you. This is a cystoscopy where under anesthesia, we're taking a telescope but are not able to go through a small prostate while he's under anesthesia, which means prostate is completely occlusive. I'm sitting inside the prostate. You can look at that. I'm sitting in the prostate, not able to enter. As I push myself with my scope inside, enter the bladder, have a look. There's no urine. That's all pus. There's all dirty urine. This man was getting recurrent infections at that age group, developing fever, burning sensations, etc. So all men getting recurrent urinary tract infection will have obstruction to the flow of urine. And that's something which you need to look into. This gentleman underwent a prostate surgery at the age of 105. In other words, those signs and symptoms I talked about is all about BPH, obstruction to the flow of urine, not able to pass, sudden urgency, pain, discomfort, straining, bleeding in urine, pain going back, pain in the abdomen, etc. are all aspects of progressive, delayed, ignored health on the urinary side. Friends, when we looked at underactive bladder and overactive bladder as a bladder phenomenon, I also remember at Coquilabin Hospital five years ago, we were looking at this nocturia and bedwetting clinic. Elderly people produce more urine at night. Children have bedwetting at night. And this was something where we got an advertorial to wake people up. Remember, waking people up, sitting in Andheri, all the way to and a half kilo hours away in Thane, people came up with this advertorial from that location saying that we have this complaint. Are you really truthful that you could be able to treat our nighttime urination and our bedwetting? And that is how we woke up the society. Like we're doing it today to you. It is important for us to wake up that nocturia or getting up multiple times at night is because of nocturnal polyuria or excessive production at night. Maybe more so because of our beverages, our drinking habits, our tea, coffee, alcohol, which work as diuretics, our habits of drinking milk at night, or because we are diabetics and produce more urine at night, or because of prosthetic issues, bladder issues, or because of other issues too, which means uncompensated heart disease, uncontrolled diabetes, estrogen deficiency, primary polydipsia, and psychological and sleep problems also lead to getting up multiple times at night and passing urine. And therefore, it needs to be made aware that nocturia or getting up at multiple times at night is just not a urinary trouble. It could there be a systemic trouble of problems of lungs, problems of diabetes, problems of heart and psychological problems and sleep problems too, which needs to be looked into. And therefore, we need to go and dive deep into that. I was talking about international prostate symptom scores, about understanding and scoring yourself. Go to the Google, pick up the IPSS, look at your scores. Either you could be mild or you could be moderate or you could be severe. If you're severe, Take up tomorrow morning to a urologist. If you're moderate, move into a urologist, do a uroflometry and get it sorted. If you're mild, be on a watchful waiting and be aware that these awareness drives will ring in your head and you will look at it again and again. Finally, friends, we're coming to an end and let's talk about treatment. Very important that your urologist handholds the program of evaluating you and then treating you. You may have evaluated yourself also through Google, but evaluating on an awareness drive was to pick up those important aspects in your comfort zones. If you have been postponing urinary health, if you have been taking medicines and not being effective, then we need to know the reasons of not being effective. If you landed up with prostatitis, which is a prostate infection, then your urologist would give you proper antibiotics, ask you for a culture before he gives you antibiotics, give you symptomatic treatment, look at you don't get obstructed and treat you very closely to treat this acute prostatitis completely and not let it go to a chronic prostatitis. Friends, you're talking more about the common problem that men have in their 40s to 80s, BPH, which is all about the language that society knows as enlarged prostate. So prostate may have got enlarged internally or externally. The enlargement of prostate seen on sonography, which baffles you in a health checkup, or which is a part and parcel of the folklore of the symptoms that you're going through. The urologist does two important aspects. He gives you medications to improve your urinary flow called alpha blockers. And they belong a complete family of medicines today because of the research that has helped us to move to the next level. That means we relax your urinary passage for the flow to get better. And you feel better. You start feeling better. You probably give a lot of uh, respect to your doctor and say, this is great. You did good to it. But probably we need to know how good have we done. That's important for us. So while being on alpha blocker therapy, you also need to assess yourself or let yourself be assessed that I've improved and I've done well. That is what is important to matter rather than adjusting to some degree of flow. 
So urine flows well. I had also talked about prostate getting shrunk. So let's look at that. Alpha reductase inhibitors are those set of drugs which medications which bring about changes or shrinkage of the prostate gland and therefore improving the flow. So in a dual way, we do either improving the flow alone or improving the flow by shrinking of the gland or combining both the medicines for the flow to get better. And the bladder therefore becomes more shant rather than getting angry and contracting and becoming irritable. Friends, not everybody can be managed with medication, partly because the medicine can be defeated, your clinical state can defeat the medicines and a urologist. This was always a surgical disease. If you have fever, nobody operates you. For all fevers, you take either crocin or dolo, you get injectables, and we continue to treat a fever for an infection or a malaria or a COVID or whatever. So you're treated for fever by medical management. Out here in early pickup or an early awareness drive like this, picks up people early in the society, we start them on medical management. The medical management is in improve your flow and shrink your prostate gland, not let you grow old in your prostate, though gracefully you get older and older, you still stay younger on your prostate. In other words, for those patients who do not do well with you with the medical management, which are patients with still poor flow while on complete medical management, assessed and reassessed and change medications, number one. Number two, those who have got stones in the urinary bladder, those who bleed from their prostates because that has overwhelmed the blood supply, those who will end up with kidney failure or are getting hydrourotonephrosis and very high residual volumes, or those who have landed up with the urinary catheter and the catheter cannot come out, these people would desire to get cured. They don't want treatment anymore. They are in trouble. They need a cure. And the cure, therefore, could possibly be a surgery. EORP or transvaginal resection of prostate has been the gold standard, but all surgeries which have been done in the past, from an open surgery to a robotic surgery uh, you know, for BPH, for the very large prostates, towards a holmium laser uh, surgery, towards various kinds of uh, prolift. All these treatments are basically radical treatments towards improving your symptoms, preventing complications, and helping you towards a cure. And that cure is what we aim for. We're looking at cure in people whom we pick up early and cure them so that they don't have to be on lifelong medications. If you need to be, you need to be. In other words, get better and better with medication and stay stable and may not require a surgery. In other words, you may pass a lifetime without any trouble on medications and you continue to do well, which means on a medical management, you need to be on a follow. If you are on a medical management with your urologist in your city, that means you are taking medicines for improving the flow, medicines to shrink the prostate, medicines to press the bladder and contract the bladder because the bladder is weak. It is a follow-up all the time. Your doctor could call you once in three months, once in six months, once in a year, depending on your clinical state. Number one. Number two, if you're undergoing a prostate surgery, not for cancer, but for prostatic enlargement and occlusion and blockage, then a doctor did a TURP or he removed the internal gland or the adenoma. Like you take a spoon and eat the coconut from inside and leave the shell outside. In a prostate surgery for benign glands, we remove the prostate internally, but we don't remove the outer shell or the outer capsule, which means that the outer capsule can still lead to enlargement of the prostate over the next one decade, or prostate can develop into cancerous change, which is a part of the peripheral gland or the per peripheral part of the prostate, something which we need to be aware of. This was only told because all those people who have undergone prostate surgery in the past, your story is not over yet. For all your lifetime, you need to be a friend with a urologist, at least doing an annual follow-up with a PSA, with a, with a sonography and with a uroflow for him to assess how good is your urinary flow, how good is your prostate health, which actually was good when he left you after the follow-ups after your surgery. In other words, post-surgery TURP, HOLEP, you need to be on a follow-up because the capsule can still lead prostate to grow, can still lead to changes in the prostate. One of them could be cancer prostate. Friends, this was 105 years old Babaji who came from Kutch, who came in retention of urine seven years ago, who underwent a surgery and survived major part of the COVID uh, till until last year, which means we don't look at age. There's only to speak up that the age is not an important issue. We operate people in late 40s also who cannot be managed medically. And we sometimes treat people in their 80s, 90s medically too because they don't need a surgery. So surgery is the end result or a cure of a treatment where we need to look into BPH. That's where I rest my case. Over the last few minutes, cancer of prostate, which always is anxiety and worry. Cancer of prostate today is more common disease. Could be the fourth common cancer in India at this point in time in men. It presents in many ways. It could present as an incidental finding, present as an enlarged prostate, could present as my examination on a digital rectal examination. I find everything abnormal like I do few times every day to many times every week. People come in, we examine them after the uroflometry and find things completely gone wrong. Sometimes they could present from a health checkup with a large high PSA levels beyond four. Not necessarily all raised PSAs are cancer prostates, but raised PSA has to be correlated 
with a clinical phenomena and with your urologist having a look at you. He does a dental rectal phenomena. He identifies that. He looks at your urinary symptoms, look at whether it could be acute prostatitis, give you an antibiotic, or look at the serum PSA and move forward towards the biopsy. Cancer prostate is a hormone-related cancer. Can be manipulated, treated, even cured with a hormone manipulation while it continues to change and undergo a spread. The hormone relation is something which is not seen any other uh, malignancy as common as this. It's not an uncommon disease. At the age of 80 years, as 80% people have gray hairs, they could also have 80% people having cancer prostate sitting inside their prostate, not troubling them. In other words, in 80 years, we have 80% of our hair in 80 years. In 80% of our hair in cancer prostate can be possible. These people could actually be not having any trouble and they may not go to their grave or they may not die at the age of 80, 90 because of cancer prostate. It's possible they have a very low-grade disease incidentally finding, finding something compared to the younger patients who develop cancer prostate, which could have more aggressive disease. And therefore, a biopsy tells us whether you're a low grade or a high grade, a PET scan or a bone scan and the other scans tell us how much is the disease spread if it's localized is what we do for all of you. We remove or snatch the prostate completely and make you cured of a disease if you pick it up early. That means an awareness drive helps you to reach a urologist in late 40s, 50s and pick it up. Screening is a way forward and therefore health checkups are important, identifying very important. Again, the same kind of examinations we do for cancer prostate, which gives us an idea as to what it's going around. And for the cancer prostate, there was an era when you used to do watchful waiting for a very low-grade disease or an incidental disease or a T1A disease with very minimal amount of prostatic chips showing that in a TURP. But prostate removal, which is a surgery of prostate gland called prostate tummy, which initially was done in an open way by open technique, which we still continue to do many patients open. We today do by a robotic technique. Apart from that, a radiation therapy, hormone therapy, and advanced diseases of chemotherapy are treatments which your urologists and oncologists choose. If I look at... Uh, a possibility of uh, the paucity of time, I leave it alone and talk about screening for prostate cancer where men from 55 to 69 in America and in our country from 50s to 70s, we screen people looking at the changes in the prostate by uroflometry, by a sonography, and also by identifying the PSA levels. The raised PSA level needs to logically be taken to your urologist. Friends, as I come to a close, positive awareness on health is important. It wakes us from our couch. It wakes us from our comfort zone. It wakes us from a, for a better news, better family way and a better health. It's important that we don't sleep on it. Prostate cancer awareness and a prostate awareness, that's the only way towards early management. And that is what is key for all of us today. The whole wake up call today was only to wake you up and aware. The motto today is make impossible to possible, make finally treatable and finally curable rather than leaving these words. So all those which was impossible that we could not see our urologist, we could not get treated because the medicine was wrong or the medicine could not affect us or we could not get cured probably because we did not come in time can probably be shed. Combined together, yes, we can. We probably can do that better. Finally, the myths. The myths are larger the prostate, more the obstruction. Not true. Even small prostate can cause equal or immense amount of obstruction. Only elderly men get prostate cancer. I said 80% people at the age of 80 years may have cancer prostate sitting inside, but we don't even evaluate because they don't come until they have urinary complaints. But not all elderly women get prostate. You could get in late 50s, 60s, 70s where people come in. And more and more people I see with prostate cancer in that younger age group, we drive them towards an early therapy, which could be a localized cancer and they do a radical robotic prostate. Small prostates need not be treated. That's not true. We don't treat the size of the prostate. What we treat is, what is the prostate doing to you? PSA testing is not beneficial. That's not true. PSA is a surrogate marker, but it gives us a lot of idea where very large, very high PSA could be because of prostate cancer and, and a urinary infection or a prostatitis. Prostate cancer is always curable. No, 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 completely not. It's always curable when you pick it up early. And therefore, the awareness drive of picking it up early is all by screening. Surgery is the only treatment option. No, never. Today, we are spoiled for choice with wonderful medicines available, with wonderful lineages, which we can do. We identify the situation and probably give the right medicines. Surgery could be required in refractory states where you and I can't escape it. PSA testing can be done in retention and acute lets. No, not required to test PSA in acute setup. It may only be a wrong thing. You know. Friends, we always say I love my urologists in India because my urologist spends time on spending an awareness on a comfortable day like a holiday. In other words, we're looking at awareness, awareness, and awareness. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. At that time, a seed would have been a plant and then you could see the fruits of it as a tree. The second best time is now. So if we did not plant a tree long time back or did not know about it, know about it today because all good todays will become your tomorrows which probably would help you and the society to go forward. Friends, I come to a close for your questions. If you think about prostate, you think about stones, incontinence, think about obstruction, think about kidney failure or think about urological emergencies. 
You think about anything in the kidney, ureter, bladder, prostate, in men and women. I did not talk about women today who also develop all urinary issues without being having a prostate because of issues which undergo a change, which could happen in another occasion. Always think urology and think dial you for urology. Your doctor is waiting on the other side to help you out in your city. In other words, it is important for us to understand that prostate is truly a jigsaw puzzle. Just not one organ, but at the trijunction. Just not one disease, but multiple diseases. It's a million dollar question on a Republic Day as to why God made prostate. Early identification is the truth of the moment. So let's identify ourselves early on the organ, which is still going to continue to be in our generation. And urology awareness is always a challenge. Prostate awareness becomes a challenge. It's a dream that we always aim for. As I come to a close, thank you so much, Dr. Reddy. Thank you so much, Coquilabin Hospital, Team Urology and Team Coquilabin, that we are able to host such kind of awareness drives and make people aware of aspects on urinary health. I'll take a quick few questions only for the paucity of time, looking at how do we go forward in terms of our prostate health. So let me commence from the beginning on some of those important aspects which must have arrived in terms of looking at what kind of uh, questions do we need to look at. In other words, uh, what age does the prostate grow from? I said, prostate is always there since you were born. But prostate changes undergo late 40s, early 50s, and those prostates are something which is important for us to look at. Now, there's a question which is, some men with age 80 years, if prostate size is 110 cc, no obstruction to urinary flow. How do we know there's no obstruction to urinary flow? It's always an assessment. He does not feel an obstruction. But we need to know what kind of obstruction it is by assessing. And I said that assessment is a urophometry. He doesn't feel an obstruction. That means he doesn't have a significant obstruction. That's fine. That's completely fine. So it's so important that we look into that. So urinary flow is not too weak. Can be managed in medication or a surgery is required. No, no, no. Nobody is undergoing a surgery in today's world for prostate unless there are indications for surgery. That means neither you nor I deciding to decide on awareness drive as to who undergoes surgery. The clinical situation of that is decided by your urologist who sees the patient. He assesses the patient. He evaluates the patient. He looks at the urophilometry, looks at the residual volume and identifies whether there is a need for surgery or need for medication. We attempt to treat everybody medically. And that has been today's way of moving forward. Unless you come with a complication of bleeding, clots, renal failure, stones completely obstructing your urinary bladder long-standing or your prostate has become too enlarged and too occlusive and you're failing all therapies or you are in refractory retention and catheter. So we work at the Kokolab and Mani Hospital in Mumbai is what somebody asked and uh, our colleagues work across the city 24-7 and our colleagues in urology work across the country. So the severity of the BPH comes from the patient's language, number one, from the urophilometry as a normal graph which I showed you as a big ship graph or a very poor graph, understanding the severity with the bladder wall thickening, with the residual volume staying back, with stones forming in the bladder, and all of them can actually be a trouble. So we need to wake up to that phenomena of not letting us go beyond this awareness drive of only incidentals rather than something growing and probably getting ignored. Which medical therapies are effective in BPH? I did quantify that. There are two kinds of therapies which a urologist gives. He looks into umpteen aspects. For example, if somebody is not able to pass urine well, he gets an alpha blocker. I won't name any. If somebody has got a prosthetic enlargement beyond a size, your urologist actually gives a medicine which attempts to shrink a gland, which is called as a 5-ARI inhibitor. The drugs are called dutastrad and finasteride. Then there are those aspects which I need to look into. If you have an underactive bladder, your bladder is not contracted. You are actually failed for choice. You're not getting up. You're not therefore not going out. Your bladder is not contracting even if the prostate is open. Then we give medicines for the bladder to contract. My colleague patients in the society come and tell me, you know, I was not passing urine very well with the first medicine you gave me to open the prostate. I was a diabetic for the last 10 years and my diabetes were poorly controlled. I'm sorry about that. I was always taking sugar and sweets, but my bladder may have gone old and probably the bladder was diabetic cystopathy. Such patients do get a medicine to contract the bladder in an underactive bladder. How much is it effective? Again, depends a lot on you and how much are your reserves. Some patients do develop nocturia, getting a multiple times step night. There's another add-on medication too. So what medication a doctor gives is not a part of the awareness drive. That's only to wake each and everybody who watches this that if you are an ambassador of the subject, that means you immerse yourself on a holiday like this and you're looking at helping people out. You're helping yourself and the society out and your relatives and friends out. You're understanding that a doctor would probably treat you only with medication to start with. He would first assess you. It's possible that I say one in 20 patients may not require a therapy. They are either anxious. They may have heard the awareness, right? They've seen the scare of their parents or their father undergoing a catheterization or a surgery or somebody in the family had a cancer prostate. And some, some people do come all the way and we assess them and find we don't need to treat you. Your flow is very good. Like I did for somebody yesterday late in the evening and I said, your flow is awesome. 
but we also need to help these people out and identify and therefore follow up is a requirement whenever we assess. You're on medication difficulty due to a last posture. How long can one continue the medication without undergoing surgery? That's a great question, uh, Mr. Bhaskaran. Yes, so when you see a patient who is enlarged prostate and you're going to treat a patient with obstruction to the flow of urine, you're going to give those medications which are improving him, then you continue to take the medication, number one. Number two, the medications are improving you, how do we know? So and therefore, the follow-up is always a requirement. Therefore, on a medical management, do you ever stop medicines for diabetes and blood pressure? Almost no. Unless you really beat the disease of diabetes and blood pressure, you're on medications lifetime. I'm not talking about lifetime medication. I'm talking about long-term medications, attempting to reverse issues which your urologist does by both evaluation and examination and assessment. So medications don't stop. Surgery is not never decided by you because surgery is decided by the end result of failing medications, end result of complicated picture, or end result where medications won't work. So a lot of, lot of uh, practices come into play when a urologist decides a surgery or a TORP. Does BPH lead to infertility? BPH is a disease of 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80. Men are already fertile, have become children, have had already children and grandchildren by that point in time. So we're talking about not fertility and at that age group doesn't clash. Men can have two things. So when and why do we PSA? So PSA, as I said, is a test, is a test which is we do in men from their 50s to 79 years of age. We do the PSA to identify a uh, discharge from the prostate, which is called as prostate-specific antigen, which is produced from the prosthetic tissue, which is measured in blood. We measure in blood and identify changes happening in prostate as either incidental or coincidental. Coincidentally, if there is a UTI or urinary infection, the PSA may rise dramatically and you may panic, but your urologist will not panic. He will give you antibiotics and the PSA may come down. So it's a surrogate marker. Sometimes the PSA may be very low and it could be having a high grade prostate cancer. So it is not one plus one equal to two in, um, in mathematics is equal to one plus one equal to two in, in medicine. The, the, the markings are a lot depending on the scenarios which your doctor does for you. Complications of prostate surgery are gradually going down. You're the most qualified urologist in the country who train and retrain and do well to look at, you don't develop a stricture urethra. You don't develop uh, incontinence of urine. The accompaniments obviously are retrograde ejaculation, but at that point in time, you know, not, there are no complaints actually. You do otherwise very well. IPSS symptom score is a, a, a way to assess yourself. A doctor assesses you as to how you assess yourself. IPSS symptom score is, uh, is a, a proliferation of the symptom scores that came up uh, by the EUA board, and this is the best symptom score that's available. So a symptom score tells you a lot about how good or bad you are. That's what it is. So cancer prostate is something which you don't discuss in details here because the treatment is not being discussed here. It is only to make you aware that anybody can develop BPH. All, all of us can develop BPH, which we will at 50s or at 80s. Prostate cancer is an offshoot which can happen to some individuals. And that is something which we need to pick up and identify that that is uh, something which has been possibly happening in a subset of individuals. Sadly, that mm, is not very uncommon as was thought in the past. People used to come with a lot of complications, a lot of advanced diseases. Today, as a result of the awareness drives that we have across, this is just one of them. We probably look forward to making you aware that picking up the PSA as a high value, the urologist moves very quickly forward, does a digital rectal examination, evaluates you, does a prostate biopsy and MRI, takes it forward to the highest possible level. An advanced prostate cancer, which cannot be cured by your robotic radical prostatectomy, I would then probably look at a, a possible chemotherapy because it's advanced or the newer therapies which have come along. That's a time we would give injectables, but injectables may fail many a time is that's the kind of question which you have asked. The kind of questions that are coming up are all that I attempted to answer. I only look forward to that. When you have a urinary complaint, you must see a urologist. When you are in your 50s to 80s and have no urinary complaints, please still see a urologist. Why did I say so? I only said so because there are changes which are very silent, which are incidental and which may not be picked up by you. By the time you pick up, it may possibly be late. And therefore, it's always important for us to pick up incidental things in a health checkup. Identify that and see a urologist who would allay the fears, give you the right path to your treatment. If you are a diabetic, don't ignore your diabetes. If you're constipated, you may only worsen in your urinary health. So take care of your constipation, which is again a very silent thing, never, never expected, never talked about. Friends, we are... We're almost coming to a close because this was basically an awareness drive. It was only to look at, we make aware in society that there is an organ called prostate, which undergoes a hormone change. Hormone change could bring about a change, which is called as enlarged prostate or a prostate enlarging internally and causing urinary obstruction, which is again, a very gradual change. The day you wake up to obstruction, there's already moved forward by miles. If we assess the obstruction by urophlometry, we also know how to assess you in follow-up. 
medically managing you is an early treatment, failing which if you come with complications of blockage of urine, not able to pass urine even with medicines, then we look at identifying you with uroflometry, doing a urodynamics, giving you the right indication choices, and therefore a therapy, which is beyond all that I've talked till now, is a cure. And the cure is a TURP, a HOLEP, or the kind of surgery which a urologist will choose for you, not what you will choose for him. So in other words, wake up to this phenomenon. This was a talk basically to give you an idea that a urologist is interested in your urology health. He's interested in your kidneys, in your ureters, in your urinary bladder, and therefore smoking is injurious to health. All smoking brings about nine different cancers. We see kidney cancers, we see bladder cancers in smokers. We uh, see changes which happen around, which many a times are irreversible. So a lot of practice changes are required for people who have got addicted. A lot of practice changes are like required for people who are diabetics. It's a lot of sacrifice you do when you look at your health yourself. And therefore, isn't it time for you to bring health to the front row seat? I think yes. In 2022, as I come to a close and thank individuals who have made this program happen today and all those who have come today to probably be a part of an awareness drive, you all happen to be ambassadors on the subject. From Kokilvind Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital today, I sign off from Team Urology. Thanking all of you and thank you, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Govind. There's a question. Is there any link between prostate issues? Reduce cement? No, no, that's not true. There's no, there's no issue of prostate and cement together. Semen is a production from the testes comes stored in the seminal vesicles. And from there, yes, uh, the active flow of semen is only by ejaculation, which is an active process, at conk, which is coincides with orgasm. So that's something which is does not get occluded by your prostate because the ejaculate ducts open at the very tip of the prostate where uh, the ejaculate cannot be obstructed by prostate. That's a good question. Uh, uh, go in time. Thank you so much, all of you. We sign off today on this evening and we'll come back again. I do speak on these aspects on the YouTube. If you've opened up YouTube and seen me speaking on the channel where I continue to speak on various awareness drives on men's health and women's health, it is important that we wake up to health. That's all. Uh, we have woken up to health very well today um, in the COVID times, understanding ourselves, our families, and we'll continue to do better and better with passing times. Thank you, Kokila and Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, the team urology out here, the entire team of doctors, support staff. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Reddy's Labs, and thank you all who agreed to put a full immersion activity from 4 to 5.15 p.m. today to be ambassadors of health and ambassadors of profit. I take a leave, and thank you all.